everybody, how are you? My name is Mr. Pierce and I am principal here at St. Joan of Arc. And you know, in absence of us being able to do a school tour, which we'd like to do with, uh, with folks that are registering and getting ready for the new year, we thought we'd do something where we would put it on a virtual so that you can do your own school tour at your convenience. So this is, this is our version of a school tour for all of our new parents and any interested parents that are coming in. I'd like to introduce you to somebody here. Uh, we have a new vice principal here this year, and his name is Mr. Redler. Mr. Redler, how are you? Hello, everybody. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Redler is going to be uh, working behind the camera here as we kind of go through our virtual tour. So uh, at this point in time, I'd just like to say hello. Let's head on inside. And what we'll do is we'll start you off. Well, everybody, we're inside, uh, and I'd just like to let you know that we're in the main area of our school now. Once you come into, once you come into our building, uh, just to let, give you a couple of real quick little, little bit of pieces of information around uh, St. Joan of Arc Elementary School. We are a Catholic elementary school that really builds itself around the foundation of the, the belief that all of the people that enter this building are we are all called to be disciples of Christ, and so. One of the things that you'll see as you go through this virtual tour in the gym, in the hallways, on our doors, on some of the bulletin boards that we have out here right now, is visual representations of our beliefs and our Catholic faith. So uh, just to let you know, that those are some of the things that you're going to see. And as you can see behind me, we've got, we've got one of our first things that you see when you come in through our building is how uh, a representation of our love for Jesus Christ. Uh, Mr. Rebler is just going to pan the camera around a little bit here and we'll give you a little bit of a visual about where we're at. So this is our main hallway. Uh, you've just come in through the door down here. This is uh, our primary hallway and we'll take you down there in a few minutes. We have the doors that you would have entered in are right here at the front. These are our main doors for parents to come into the school building and to the left is our office. So at this point in time, I'm going to take you down our, prime, our main hallway here at the school and I'll show you a couple of classrooms and let you get a feel for what we're doing here. So this, like I said, this is our main hallway. We call this our primary hallway. This is where we have all of our classrooms from a kindergarten, pre-K, all the way up to grade four. So why don't you come on with me and we'll come on down and I'll show you a few of our rooms. All right, so we're standing right now in our pre-kindergarten classroom. This is a program that we are extremely lucky to have here at St. Joan of Arc. It's for three and four year olds prior to entering into kindergarten. Now we have a process in place, just to let you know at the end of this digital tour, there'll be some links that I'll let you know about, where if you're interested in registering for pre-K, kindergarten, or any of the grades uh, here at St. Joan of Arc that you can click on and, and uh, follow so that you can potentially register as well. Pre-K is a classroom that is funded by the provincial government, by the way, and we have a fantastic teacher and an instructional assistant who work diligently here, uh, pre-K is an awful lot of fun, and it's exactly what we said it was. It is pre-kindergarten, so you work basic skills of socialization, some basic numeracy and basic literacy and arts. It's really getting the students to kind of get comfortable with coming to school, uh, and it's a half-day program. We are offering it in the mornings next year. So Mr. Redler is just going to kind of pan around and this is going to be, this is our pre-K classroom. As you can see there are, it's fairly colorful. You're going to have to forgive us that we are closed down for the summer at this point in time. So uh, it's not fully set up, but there's a number of toys, center activities, and everything else that comes into play as well as every one of the pre-K classrooms Every one of the pre-K classrooms in our school system all have their own washrooms as well. So that's not an issue for our students. Let's keep going down the hallway and I'll show you a couple more of our classrooms.
All right. Well, now we're standing in our kindergarten classroom, and we have uh, we have we're very healthy in our kindergarten program this year. We've got a morning and an afternoon kindergarten program. They're half days, and this is our kindergarten room. As you can see, it is huge. It is a big classroom. So the teacher in here, the teacher separates up into different areas. We have a center. This is where the lear, uh, her learning circles take place. Uh, right down in this area and as you can see although we're still in summer mode we do have uh, you can get a sense of the size of the classroom and as well as the fact that there's play areas center areas with tables as well as its own washroom as well uh, which is unique because that also allows our good, good old little five-year-olds five -year to come on in here and be comfortable with their teacher as well as uh, being comfortable in the school environment. This is an extremely important time for a lot of these and we recognize that. So uh, these students are very lucky. It's a great space. It's a great space for everyone. And let, uh, the students that come in here, I rarely see them not smiling. So uh, this is our kindergarten room, everybody. <music>
or everything, uh, or to do potentially some yoga. We have yoga that happens regularly in here in the morning uh, that one of our teachers puts on uh, once a week. So that happens in here as well as a number of different activities. We run a homework club out of here at lunchtime for students. So as you can see, it's a fairly open space. It's used during the week with our band teacher as well. Uh, at the end of the classroom, as you can see, there's the piano. And we try to keep this space as open as possible. And when seating is needed, we've used lunchroom tables, which we are able to drop down, which basically will seat 30 students. And so we're very, very lucky to have this space. And this is one of those, those luxuries that, we're, that our students benefit from tremendously. Let's keep going on our tour. All right, everybody, we're going to head back down to where we started here uh, as so that I can take you to the other end of the school. But before we go and leave our primary hallway, one of the things I wanted to bring to your attention was the fact that within our school, we're, we're also very lucky to have two water filling stations. So as you might recall, parents, remember the old, the old uh, water fountains, you know, lips all over, trying to keep those clean and everything else? Well. We've got those two, but they'll probably, as you know, since we're coming into, we're coming through this uh, pandemic of COVID, that one of the things that we want to keep in mind is the safety of all of our students and our staff. And so for our students, we do have these fill stations, one in the primary hallway and one closer to the senior hallway where we'll take you right away. And those are where we have all of our students bring water bottles. On the supply lists that we've been providing to the, to the parents, it's, it asks uh, very specifically to please make sure that you provide a water bottle for your students so what, or for your children when they come to school, and this is why. Okay, so keep that in mind, and also uh, just a quick hint on those water bottles. I would prefer that you send uh, non-breakable ones, please. Uh, last year was a little goofy when I had to clean up even those hard plastic ones that broke and got stepped on. Anyway, we're going to head back down to our main hallway, down back towards the library and I'm going to take you, uh, Mr. Redler and I are going to take you on a, on a tour of a few of the other areas of our school. So let's head back that way. Welcome to the library. We're really fortunate here to have a huge library that's set up by Mr. McLean. Mr. McLean is an awesome teacher librarian. He's also going to be doing some prep in the primary areas. He teaches arts ed and phys ed, and he is in charge of the literacy nights, and he will be coaching a junior Battle of the Books team coming up this year, and a Battle of the Books team. So he's really involved with literacy throughout the school. We are really lucky to have a huge space that we can learn in, that we can read in, um, because of the COVID-19 protocols, we will be coming down as a classroom. Uh, every classroom will have some time to take out some books, and there are different ways that we're going to be using our books, but we're definitely going to be reading. So if Mr. Pierce can show a little bit around the library, we can see we have a, a genre-fied library where we're able to just pick books based on the different kind of genre that we like to read. So if you are into urban fiction, you can just find books that have that concept. Right now we're looking at the primary level area and you can see it's really colorful and has all kinds of awesome books for us to learn how to read. All right, everybody. Uh, had to take a break there, Mr. Redler. Mr. Redler was uh, he was a was a trooper uh, coming in there and letting you guys know about the library. But here's on our way to the gym here. Before we get down to the gym, I thought we'd stop. Uh, and a really good idea to just let you know a little bit about our student body. We're a pretty diversified school. We have a population of approximately next year is going to be around 330 students, and a number of our students uh, are from other countries. So their first language is oftentimes not English. So here at St. Joan of Arc we have an 80% EAL teacher uh, who works here at the school with our students and 80% means that they are here basically four out of five days a week. 
and they are working in the classroom as well as doing some pullouts out of the classroom and working with individual similar group students uh, in order to help develop the English language. So just over here is where we have our EAL uh, workspace and this is where the teacher works with small groups. So as you can see it's a specialized area complete with its own resources. Uh, it also has a washroom at the back which we're a little tight here to go back there but Mrs. Flagel is our EAL teacher and we have to let you know she's phenomenal and so just to let you know this is where the small groups uh, would work on pullout once they're once they're being uh, once they are developed and identified. But like I said, we have a very, very diverse student body and I'd say approximately uh, one third of our students here at St. Joan of Arc are EAL students. So we welcome them, we welcome all of them. We are all one big family here. And uh, let me tell you, it is a fantastic thing to see. It really helps us understand diversity and understanding each other. So let's keep going down to the gym, everybody. Welcome to the gym. We have a nice big gym here at St. Joan of Arc. Echo! As you can see, the very first image that you see when you walk in the door is our um, model for the school. It's a wonderful depiction of gospel writing and it says we are called to be disciples. At St. Joan of Arc School, that is something that we internalize in everything we do. We want to do the best that we can for our community by doing service projects in some of the older grades, by just treating each other the way that God wants us to be treating each other. And so one of the things that we usually do at this school is have daily assemblies to help to build our community of disciples. However, because of the pandemic, we won't probably be starting at the very beginning of the year in that way, but we'll still be trying to plan out ways that we can keep our community together. Because as we build together, we grow together, and we all become better people. And so we want to make St. Joan of Arc the best learning environment for every single person. And we are called to be disciples. Right here you can see a poster that shows our matrix, our behavior matrix, that shows how at St. Joan of Arc we are going to be working toward being our disciples, to acting and being called as disciples. So all of the students throughout the school will become more familiar with this. It is associated with and working with programs on finding positive behaviors and making good choices around the school and making us into leaders of the future. As we pan around, we can see that we have a large, uh, large number of entrances throughout the school that allow us to have safe ways for the kids to get in and out of the school without having too much congestion. We also have up on the wall here, you can see many different words that celebrate our kindness, the things that we do to be called to being disciples. There are these statements, there's words, positive quotes, that are on every single door in the, in the school, plus throughout the hallways to remind the students about how we can positively affect change throughout our school and our community. Now we're gonna head down to the grade five to eight area of the school so we can see what the bigger kids do. All right, everybody. Uh, back at you here. As we head down into our older area of the school, one of the rooms I want we wanted to stop and let you know about is another part of the programming here at St. Joan of Arc, and that's our LRP program. That, that stands for Learning Resource Program. We're standing right now in our Learning Resource Room. Uh, as you can see, it is a big classroom. It is a regular sized classroom that is set up and we have a very experienced and very, very talented uh, learning resource teacher who takes, who takes students and works with students from basically grade one all the way up to, well, this year he was working all the way up to grade seven. And so we, in here we run our literacy program, our early intervention program for literacy, as well as helping out with math, 
uh, and some of the other learning pieces that come into play. We also have in our school some students who are uh, have been uh, in a situation where they may be working with some anxieties, they may be working with some learning difficulties, and this is one of our major workspaces where uh, Mr. St. Amand, who is our learning resource teacher, works with the students in either small groups or individually, and as well goes into their classrooms to help assist. So as you know, it's extremely important that a school works with all of the students and that the programming in a school is extremely is dedicated towards helping students no matter backgrounds, no matter abilities, because in the end we want everybody to grow. And that philosophy here is tremendously important. So this is our learning resource classroom. It is a, it is a room uh, that we are very lucky to have. As you can see, we're kind of blessed with some beautiful spaces here in St. Joan of Arc. So let's keep on heading down our hallway and we'll give you a little bit of a glimpse into what else we, we provide here. Speaking a little bit about, uh, about the supports that we provide here in the special programming of St. Joan of Arc, one of, the, one of the other aspects that we are extremely blessed to have is a family support coordinator that works directly in our school. Uh, our family support coordinator works out of this room, this office, and as you can see, it is set up so that uh, there's some chairs and that sort of thing. There are oftentimes some small group activities uh, that she will conduct, but our family support coordinator also runs a little bit of a snack program for our students, uh, helps reach out to families in need, helps provide other families with some of the necessary supports that you may be looking for over the course of the summer, and it's basically exactly what the name entails. Somebody that is available to our families to help connect. And this, Mrs. Lewis uh, is our current uh, family support co coordinator. It's kind of getting tongue-tied here, all right. Um, I don't know what's going on. But with regards to that, uh, she is unbelievable. She is incredible. And uh, she brings the philosophy that every student needs to just be able to get a leg up. And sometimes we know it's a little bit tough at times to be able to do that. And if we can help a family help, help or anything else that way, we do so. Also here at the school, not necessarily in this room, we also have, as part of our support team here, we have a school counselor that is here for 40% of the week. So our, our uh, school counselor works with students and works with teachers uh, in classrooms as well to, in order to help provide the necessary, necessary programming and some of the other activities that help benefit our students in their growth. Together, these programs also help contribute to what we've been emphasizing here over the last little while, which has been uh, our our uh, dedication to be a, being a school that is uh, very familiar with trauma-informed practices and helping our students grow with regards to their own mental awareness. And so some of the different things that we have done in the past that we're hoping to continue with are, is our mental health, our mental wellness hours that we've been able to do in the school as well as some of the other different activities in the classrooms because healthy mind, healthy body, that leads to education. That leads to having a, a, a good experience at school. It's not just about educating the mind with the books. It's also about developing. So let's keep moving. We'll give you a glimpse at a grade six and a grade seven, eight room. Ms. Vizen's grade six classroom. I'm standing right here in front of the Bravo board because I enjoy the way that our staff like to celebrate the great things that the students do. In this classroom, we have a whole bunch of things that are set up in really colorful ways that help students to achieve their best learning environment. Also on display up on top of the table here, which we don't normally sit on top of tables, but I have a couple of different chairs for different sensory uh, adaptations and ways that we can apply good learning practices for all of the students in the school. 
There's even a big beanbag chair in the corner there, right by the books for a reading corner. I think that I'm going to be hanging out in there for sure. The grade five and six students in the school are so lucky to have great teachers who are going to be able to provide an excellent learning environment for students as they grow a little bit older and start to mature and get ready for grade seven and eight. Talking about grade seven and eight, we better head there now. We're now in the grade seven and eight classroom where we get to teach the leaders of the school. These are the students that were really trying to ingrain that attitude that we are called to be disciples. And so, as you can see in this, on display in every classroom, we have a prayer table and a way that we can celebrate our faith. What makes us distinctive as a Catholic school is that we can permeate faith into all of our subject areas. And so that makes us extra special and is probably a big reason why you're choosing to send your students to our school. You can see here that in this classroom, we also want to make sure that we're preparing our students to be successful in school this year and into the future as our grade eights will be going to high school in the next year. So we have all the I can statements up on display so that the students know where the curricular um, outcomes are and why we're doing the things that we're doing. Again, we are creating leaders, but we're hoping to create disciple leaders. And so we are fortunate to have three grade seven and eight classrooms this year with three amazing teachers that are going to help these leaders to make our school an awesome place to be. All right, everybody. We're at our senior entrance and exit here at the school. This is at the very end of our uh, classrooms. And so right behind me are the doors that open up towards 7th Avenue. We're going to, in a couple of moments there, we're going to take you outside. We're going to give you a little bit of an idea about where we're all situated and how our, and how our uh, playground is structured. But I also wanted to let you know about how everything is structured outside. It's because many of you, we're a very high population of our student body, comes to school on the school bus. They come, and they, they, they come on the bus and they leave on the bus. And so I think it's really important that as parents, you have an understanding of how we organize ourselves out there and how we do our very best to ensure the safety of our students as they come and as they go. So why don't you come with me? We're gonna head on outside and we'll give you a little bit of an outside tour of what the school is like. All right, everybody, well, we're standing out here on the sidewalk right along 7th Avenue. 7th Avenue, of course, is one of the main streets around uh, St. Joan of Arc. And behind me, as you can see, are a number of yellow pylons. These yellow pylons are what we've classified off as our no parking zone with regards to our school buses. So when the school buses arrive in the morning, we have anywhere, anywhere between four or five different buses that will be bringing students. This is where they stop. So we ask our parents, of course, to please respect the no stopping zone so that our students can get on safely and, and get off safely in the morning and on safely in the afternoon when they're completely finished. For any of you kindergarten parents out there, kindergarten bus also uses this zone and they, they drop off here and we bring the kids right onto the playground. One of the philosophies that we emphasize here at St. Joan of Arc is that it's our belief that when a student comes to school with that energy and smile in the morning, that they should be leaving at the end of the day with the exact same energy and smile. Well, maybe the energy's a little lower, they might be tired, but they should be smiling. And so with that in mind, we try to structure our day so that their experience here at St. Joan of Arc is one where they feel happy. Sometimes it takes a little bit of work, but I'll tell you what, it's always worthwhile in the end. So knowing that this is where we're at, we like to greet our buses in the morning. We have supervision outside the school on the playground, as well as down here at the school buses. So we like to be able to say hi as soon as they come off, and we like to be able to say, have a great night, you guys. See you tomorrow morning at the end of the day. Let's head on over to the playground. We'll give you a sense of our playground and how we structure that. So we're inside of our playground now and this 
Basically behind me, if you can see, this, these are our, pro, our two primary play structures. When I say primary, I mean primary grades. So the two, the two play structures behind me are used by mostly our grade, our kindergarten, grade one, grade two, and grade three students. And believe me, they are busy. I don't know if you guys played this when you were young, but the popular game is grounders or some sort of a tag. And it, those things are constantly going. Also behind me, we have a huge, we're lucky enough to have a huge open play field. This is part of it only. And out in this area, we have our students. Popular games, of course, are football. But soccer tends to be going all over the place. We provide the students with pylons so they can set up and that they can uh, they can set up their goals. But at the same time, we also draw pylons back here usually in order to separate the areas of the playground so that when the older students want to play a little bit, they got some space as well. And then we also have a separate area. Our playground is huge. This is only about half of what we've got so far. So we're going to go to the other side and we're going to uh, give you a glimpse over there and I'll talk a little bit about how we separate our playground a little bit between our grades. Come on with me. All right, everybody, we're still outside and we're giving you a little bit of a glimpse of the other side of our playground, which typically has been where our grades six, sevens and eights kind of hang out. We have, we have, like I said before, we're extremely lucky. Our playground is extremely huge. And so we, we are able to have three play structures for our students, as well as a nice big pavement area, which we're hoping to get expanded next year. Popular games in here, let me tell you, are four square, four square. Oh, and by the way, four square. It is crazy. Uh, but it's a hugely popular piece for all of our students. Now, Knowing that, just to let you know a couple of things about how we organize our recesses here. Last year, in 2019-2020, we, we ran a typical recess in the morning where our students were outside, uh, all of them at the morning recess, and then in the afternoon, we had a split recess. Coming into our new school year, well, there's going to be new restrictions in place for all of us, and we were so lucky to be able to have what we did last year, that this year, coming into the new year, we're going to be able to run a split recess in the afternoon and a split recess in the morning, which will look a little bit different. The result of that is that we're going to have a lot less students on the playground, and they're going to have even more space, which is incredible. So we're looking, we're looking here at a pretty nice, pretty nice uh, format for all of our students to be able to enjoy uh, everything from tetherball to soccer to foursquare to just hanging out to being out there uh, making up their own games, etc., etc., etc. So with regards to that, uh, we're going to head back inside. The clouds are starting to come, believe it or not, and I don't know. I don't want to mess up my hair, it, you know, just to let you guys know. So. We're going to head back towards our doors, give you a sense of uh, give you a sense of that, and then we're uh, going to wrap up. So, come on back inside with me, guys, before it starts to rain. Okay, so everybody, we're back inside. How many of you are familiar with Star Trek? Huh? Some of you must be. Well, we're standing on the bridge of the Enterprise at this point in time. So this is the bridge of St. Joan of Arc. Thought we'd end it with just coming on into the office area here and let you know uh, a few different things. First of all, uh, this is home to Mr. Redler, myself, and the most important person in the school, our office manager, who is Mrs. Schneider and later next year we're also going to have uh, Mrs. Schneider unfortunately is going to be retiring uh, however we will we have a fantastic lady that will be taking over from her by the name of Mrs. DiCaprio. In here everybody you need a band-aid you come and see us we got a band-aid for you. You need you need to have a question you come down and you ask us. Parents you're gonna phone you're gonna want to know about registrations where this is where we do it. Uh, it's the hub, it's the epicenter, and we try to make it as welcoming as possible. So uh, this is our office area. We basically are 
at the conclusion of our tour of St. Joan of Arc. Thank you for your patience as we bounced around a video camera to do this. Like I said, we typically would have done this in a way where we would have liked to have walked every single one of you through uh, the school when you would have had the time, but unfortunately the conditions with COVID just didn't allow us to do that. So if you have any questions uh, or any concerns or you would like to know about uh, inquiring about potential registration or anything else that way or what things are going to look like in the fall, please feel free to contact us. Uh, you can contact us by hitting the contact link at the bottom of our web page. If you look up St. Joan of Arc School, at the bottom of that there is a way of contacting us through email. We will respond. I know it's summer. So we, you have to please be patient. There might be a little bit of a delay with the response because we are going to try to have a little bit of downtime before we get all wound up in August again. Uh, if you're looking or you got a friend who might be looking around for registrations and that sort of thing, uh, we have at the top of our webpage, there is a banner up there that is uh, called Titled Registrations. They just have to click that link and they can fill in a jot form. And once again, somebody will contact them back for any additional information. So I'd like to thank you all very, very much for taking the time to join us here today. Mr. Redler, thank you for your expertise and all and everything. As you can see, this is going to be something new for our students. Two big bald guys in the office. I don't know what that's going to entail, but I'll tell you something. We're looking forward to August. So to each and every one of you, we want to say God bless, stay safe, and you know what? Enjoy your summer break. Everybody deserves it. So God bless everybody. Have a wonderful summer, and we'll see you in August.